Hello and welcome back to the Beta YouTube channel and we're back with Startcast, I believe this is episode 5 or 6 and today we're going to again, following the usual format, look at three main business stories, startup stories in the news uh, and then we're going to look at a, an idea, a product, a new startup uh, to showcase that isn't as big as the main stories um, so let's get straight into it with the first story. So our first story today is looking at the European challenger bank N26, which has just completed a $300 million venture backed round uh, by, uh, led by venture partners. And that's taking the company's valuation to just over $2.4 billion. Now N26 launched in 2015 in Germany and have grown their user base to over 2.3 million users of N26 bank accounts. Now they have around, and N26 have stated this, around 1 billion euros held in uh, aggregation in total total across these accounts, presumably in N26, two flagship debit card products. Now the first of which is the N26 just standard debit card which comes with the, bank, the banking app and also free ATM withdrawals and payments in any other currency. Now the other product is N26 Black, which has all the standard features of the N26 original uh, debit card, comes with the app, but it also comes with th uh, free cash withdrawals anywhere in the world and also free currency transfers as well as similar to the N26 product, but also has an insurance package. So if you travel around a lot by paying the monthly fee, which I believe is nine euros, 90, something like that, uh, you, you're insured for anywhere you go and you can make claims directly within the app. Um, and now, as I said, um, the N26 black card is where they're making their revenue. It's costing uh, users $9.90, €9 a month. And the N26, the standard debit card, is a free checkings account at the moment. Now, N26 have made it very clear that their goal with this venture round and with 2019 is to penetrate into the US market. Currently, they're only operating uh, in and around Europe and they want to expand this. And the US market is a massive opportunity to widen their business. As well, they said that the part, the, the, some of the reasons for this round and the goals of 2019 are also to develop the app's features and make it more intuitive uh, for users for managing their own personal finances. And one of these features is actually uh, creating a shared account so people can have joint accounts and make payments uh, into accounts that way. Now all these challenger banks, N26, Monzo, Starling Bank and all the rest of them uh, are developing this user acquisition model at the moment where they're spending a lot of money and taking a lot of investment uh, and plowing that into getting these customers onto their platforms. And uh, N26 are actually uh, have stated that a third of their customers are generating revenue for them and on a per customer basis they're actually profitable. So it'll be interesting to see with N26's revenue generating products, uh, Monzo starting to develop its lending range and uh, you know Starling Bank already have a suite of lending products that they offer. Um, if they can sustain uh, the profitability uh, to exceed investment and acquisition of customers and just see if they can actually start generating returns for investors. Now moving on to our next story we're going to be talking about the US San Francisco based startup Postmates. Now I don't know if we can really classify Postmates as a startup it was as it was founded in 2011 but it is basically an online logistics provider uh, that's similar to the likes of Deliveroo, Uber Eats where you can order groceries, shoes even, alcohol and have it delivered to your door. And now the reason we're talking about Postmates today is that they've just raised a hundred million dollars in a new uh, venture backed round. Uh, taking their total investment to around $670 million. Now, the San Francisco startup mainly operates within the US, but they've expanded into other markets. And as I said before, they're a logistics provider that basically have drivers on the road that you can order on the app for them to pick up groceries, food, anything you kind of name it, as long as the retailer is listed on the app. Currently, their pricing scheme is $7.99 uh, in the US. And with this, you get a free delivery uh, free delivery fees on top of orders of $15 or more. Now, the main firms that were leading this round were BlackRock and Tiger Global. And it doesn't come as a surprise to a lot of investors and a lot of people following this story because um, JP Morgan has been advising Postmates to launch an IPO in 2019. And it makes sense to get this uh, round in before to get this almost free money, if you you like um, before you get the uh, launch valuation and the IPO valuation. However, there is concerns around the success and the, the, the amount of subscription to the IPO, given the amount of competition in the delivery logistics kind of market. We've got Uber Eats, Deliveroo, and SoftBank have just plowed another, I think it's around about $250 million into uh, Postmates' biggest competitor, DoorDash, taking their valuation to almost, I think, just over twice um, Postmates' valuation, uh, about $4 billion. So 
it will be interesting to see if this IPO actually happens and how it pans out. Now onto our final story. This isn't a completely unique story. It's more of a follow-up to a story I talked about a couple of episodes ago surrounding The Wing, which was the female-only co-working space. Um, and they had just done a $75 million uh, round led by Sequoia Capital. And they're in the news because they've just opened up their membership to no longer only being female, uh, they're actually opening up to male as well. Now, in the past, The Wing have faced a lot of criticism saying that the female-only co-working spaces are the result of uh, discrimination towards men. Um, now, currently, they're facing lawsuits and investigations from the city of New York um, surrounding these issues, but they say the fact that they've changed their membership to be accessible to not only females but males uh, was already in the works as a result of discussion with um, members of The Wing uh, in the trans and non-binary community saying that they thought it would be a good idea to open up the membership to all genders. Now, the key thing going forward for the wing is making sure that they get a balance between the new members, um, the male new members, also respecting the vision of a female friendly co-working space that the wing has set out. But ultimately, the wing is a business and in cities like New York, where there's such a scarce amount of space for entrepreneurs to work, it's a great business opportunity to generate more revenue from a growing market by opening it up to males. Not only is a growing market and a wider market good for business, but it's also great for investors too. So we'll have to see how this story pans out and I'll make sure to keep you updated on Startcast. Okay, so we're moving on from the main stories and we're gonna move on to our startup or idea product highlight. And that's gonna be called My Holiday Map. So like most of the products that I come up with and the startups that are on the startup show showcase, um, I found this on Product Hunt and I thought it was just a really cool, small, simple idea for basically taking maps of your holidays. So let's say you've gone traveling around Europe or gone on a road trip around America, and instead of marking the memento using just a screenshot of Google Maps where you just uh, screenshot, oh, well, I've been here and, and tap all the different places, which doesn't make a good uh, decoration piece. Here, you can actually custom make using their tool um, a plotted path of your holiday and then hang it up as a picture frame. Uh, they have really cool designs. Um, I don't think it's anything super in innovative, but I just thought it's a cool idea, a great gift, um, and some Something that you can mark your holidays with. Okay, so that's going to be it for this episode of Startcast. I know some of the stories might have seemed a bit more rushed or a bit more shorter this time. It's just because I've got a lot of work on at the moment and I'm trying to cover um, both doing content and also my university degree, uh, job applications. There's a lot of other things going on, but hopefully uh, this has got you up to date on some of the main stories. Um, I'm really enjoying doing this show at the moment. And as well, I've contacted probably three or four um, different people, entrepreneurs to have podcasts with um, at the beginning and the middle of February. So we'll have more more podcasts going out and more unique content um, so I hope you enjoyed um, I think that's going to be it for today so thank you for watching Starcast and I'll see you on the next episode